What happens when Samantha meets Code Llama? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out in this video. If you're not familiar with Samantha, it's a model that was trained by Eric Hartford. Now, the way Eric has described this, it's supposed to be a person with identity and providing friendship and companionship to the users. For training, Eric used GPT-4 to create a dataset and then he fine-tuned the original Llama 1. In this new iteration of Samantha, Eric actually fine-tuned a code Llama 34B model with Samantha's dataset. Now, this is a very interesting idea because code Llama was specifically trained for code generation. But now with the help of this uh, Samantha's dataset, uh, it can also do conversation as well. In the rest of the video, we will explore how good this model is, both at being a companion as well as a helpful programmer. So let's get started. Look now for our test to run this locally, we are going to be using a 4-bit quantized version. In this case, we're going to be using this new uh, format, GGUF, uh, and we are going to be uh, testing this within the Ubabuga text generation web UI. Now, a quick note about this new uh, model format. There's a new format introduced by the Llama CPP team. They have discontinued support for GGML models. So if you use the newer version of Llama CPP, you will not be able to use the GGML models anymore. Now, I personally tested this new format within the Ubabuga text generation web UI, uh, and it seems to work uh, perfectly fine. I'm going to be testing this within the Ubabuga text generation web UI. If you don't know what it is or how to install this, I have a couple of videos. I would recommend watching those for the installation process. Now, usually what I do is I simply copy this repo ID and then go back to the Ubabuga text generation web UI, uh, paste the model ID or repo ID here. So something like this, and then click download. But what I have noticed is that it will download uh, all the different uh, quantized models. So if you go here uh, and you look at the files and versions, you will see that there are different quantized versions. So for example, this is this uh, two bit quantized version, right? This is a four bit quantized, five bit quantized, six bit and eight bit quantized version. Uh, on my end, whenever I do this uh, to download it automatically, it seems to download all of these uh, different versions. So that takes a, it takes a lot of bandwidth as well as disk space. I would recommend you to go to the uh, folder where the text generation web UI is installed. Then within that folder, uh, there is going to be a models folder. So if you are downloading a new model, simply create a new uh, folder in here. So let's say I'm gonna simply call it test folder. You need to go back to the repo and just download two files. The first one we need is config.json. So you can click on this down arrow, it will download the file, and then uh, select which uh, quantized version you want to download. So for example, if I want to download the four bit quantized version, I'm going to simply click on this, and this will download the file for me. And after that, simply drag those files into this new folder that you created. So for example, for this one, I created this uh, folder called Samantha Code Llama, and I simply uh, downloaded only these two files and paste it in there. Now, after that, if I simply go back and uh, click refresh, then it will refresh my list. And now within this list, I can see that there is this uh, new model called Samantha Code Llama. So that's the one that I want to use. Uh, just select that, click load, and that will load the model for you. Now, before testing the model, I also want to address one common question that a lot of people ask, and that's related to the type of resources uh, or VRAM that you need in order to run these different models. This table is part of the local GPT uh, project. So here you can see different models. So 7B, 13 billion, 32 billion, and 65 billion parameter model, and then different precisions. Now, the number that you see with gigabytes is actually the VRAM requirements. So for example, if you're trying to run a 7 billion parameter model uh, in four bit quantized version uh, using the GPTQ uh, format, so you will need around 3.5 gigabytes of RAM. 
Now, similarly, if you are trying to run something like 32 billion parameter model with four bit quantization, you will need around 16 gigabytes of VRAM. I have seen uh, people asking this question. So I wanted to provide an answer and you can use this table for reference. Okay, with that out of the way, let's test this model. So first we'll simply go to the chat and we are going to be using the uh, chat ability of the Ubabuga text generation web UI. So let's start with a simple hi. So we started with a simple hi and the model respond, hello, what, I, what can I help you with today? Okay, so next I asked it, what is your name? And tell me about yourself. So it started off by saying, my name is Samantha. I enjoy providing companionship and support to the users like you through engaging conversation and sharing knowledge on various topics, right? So it's a pretty friendly tone uh, for this specific model. Now, next, let's check if it's going to be willing to help us with the Python program. So my question is, uh, can you help me write a Python uh, program? And it says, sure, what's the task you have in mind? So we're going to ask it to help us write a Python function. Uh, so that's going to be called Fibonacci that returns the end Fibonacci number. So it's a textbook programming question. Uh, and let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so it came up with an implementation and this implementation is correct. But let's see how this is going to explain the code. Okay, so it gave me an explanation of what is going on in the code. Uh, then I said, this is helpful. And it kind of went the extra mile and says, I'm happy to help. Remember that I'm always here to assist you with any questions or topics you might have. Uh, so whether they're related to programming, math, science, or just friendly chat, right? So it has a pretty uh, friendly tone to it, which is um, really good. Okay, so I'm going to ask a couple of more programming questions. And these are the ones that the original code llama model was not able to solve correctly. So the first one is given a string. So you uh, write a Python function that rearranges the characters so that the matching letters are grouped together. Uh, so for example, if this is the input, then it's, so then it's supposed to group uh, the same characters together. And let's see what solution it comes up with. This specific question was shared by a community member on the Discord server. So check out our Discord server. There is an amazing community and everybody is really helpful. So I actually ran into token limit. So I'm going to go to parameter. Okay, so the response generated is pretty small. I'm going to change this and uh, let's set this to 3000. Uh, actually, let's make it 2000 because it has to uh, it, it needs some space for memory as well as uh, the input uh, token. And let's change this to something like uh, probably 0.1 or 0.2 because we want it to generate code. So I think this will work. Okay, uh, so I had to actually rerun this again because I ran into a few issues. Uh, but here is the response that it generated. And the code doesn't seem to be the proper code. But I went ahead and actually tested it. So when I provided this input, it simply gave me back the input. So this code does not really work. The implementation is uh, definitely wrong. Another question that the original code llama got wrong was this one. Can you help me uh, write a Python function, which is called Roman to integer that converts a Roman numeral to an integer, right? So it first came up with this really nice explanation and then it implemented the code. So what I did was I copied this code again and I tested this in a Google Colab. And for this specific task, the implementation is actually correct. Uh, so this is 1994 in a Roman numeral and it got it right. So that is pretty impressive. Okay, so apart from the programming questions, I also did a couple of tests on logical reasoning. For example, here is a question that I like to ask. A glass door has push on it in mirrored writing. Uh, should you push or pull it? Please think out loud step by step. And the answer that it came up with was a surprising one. So it says to open a glass door with push written on the handle. First check if there is any additional information about how to operate the door. If not, try pushing gently and slowly in the direction of the arrow or symbol. If that doesn't work, pull the door handle instead. 
right so it's completely uh, ignored uh, this part that there's this mirror writing on it right and it simply tells us okay try to push it if it doesn't work just pull it right even even though if uh, it actually completely ignored uh, the uh, mirror writing part but the answer is kind of smart okay another quick test that i wanted to perform was to see how um, long of a text it can generate the uh, code llama models can generate up to 100,000 tokens so i asked it to write an essay of 4000 words about the role of ai in healthcare right and it came up with a pretty nice essay but i think it's hardly uh, 500 words it's not close to 4000 words right so i would say that that's a fail i would say overall uh, samantha with code llama is a very uh, decent model it does a pretty good job at being uh, friendly uh, because the tone is friendly the conversations are pretty nice uh, and it's able to do some coding as well although i think the coding is not on par with code llama now i also want to highlight a couple of other things it was not really a smooth sale when testing this model uh, during my test sometimes it generated some weird responses so for example when i asked it to uh, write a python code it started writing code in c language which was completely irrelevant similarly when i asked it to give me responses uh regarding let's say a subject it again started writing some weird uh, c code so it might be something related to the quantization process rather than the model itself uh, but when i restarted the ubabuga text generation web ui a couple of times uh, that seemed to flesh it out uh, and the issues were resolved now, overall, I would say it's a very interesting approach to use uh, code generation models uh, for general purposes and give them a personality. Well, the great thing is people are uh, coming up with some very innovative and interesting ideas and trying those out. And that's actually how you progress. I hope you found this video useful. Consider liking the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the push notification. If you like the content on the channel and would like to support my work, check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.